And this week's parasha, Parashat Vayigash, the Arachayim brings up a question that bothers many and should bother all of us as we read the parashas Vayesh of Miketz and, and Vayigash. We read the parasha of Yosef from the time the brothers sold Yosef until Yosef says those immortal words, Ani Yosef Vayidavichai. So many years had passed, 22 years passed during the time from when the brothers sold him till the time that he was able to inform his father and all the, a lot of the Mepharshim, a lot of the philosophers, a lot of the Baal Machshava, they ask, Yosef was in jail, he couldn't do anything. When he was in the home of Paitifar, he, really he didn't really have the power or the authority to do anything. But now Pari made him the head of Egypt. He was the head of the financial department. The entire process of distributing food distribution was in his hands. For nine years, he had a position of power. Why didn't he reach out to Yaakov, to his father? Why didn't he write a letter? Why didn't he send messengers? Why didn't he go himself to his father and say, Hey, Dad, guess what? I became the vice president of Egypt. I'm still alive. Why didn't he do it? Why did he wait until the brothers came to ask for food? And then he made a whole play with them and hid the, hid the goblet and binyamins. And then only after that, when they say, Oh, oh, we're we're so sorry, we're so sorry. Tell my father I'm still alive. For nine years, he doesn't tell his father. Why not? A lot of people ask the question. The Archaim gives an unbelievable answer. Archaim says, We know famous Gemara in Bava Kama, Dafnun Test, the Gemara says, It's better a person should, should throw himself in a kivshona esh, in a burning furnace, but not embarrass another person. We learned it from Tamar. Tamar was willing to die as long as Yehuda didn't admit to his wrongdoing. Tamar was not going to say that it was Yehuda. Why? Better she should die. And they were going to they were going to burn her in a furnace. Better she, she should die than insult than embarrass another person, insult another person. Says so Archaim Hakadosh, Yosef knew he figured out that the brothers had told their father a story. He had told them something. He had sold them some sort of fake news that Yosef something happened to Yosef. He got eaten up by while he didn't know the story, but he knew that Yaakov didn't know. He knew that the brothers did not, re, did not feel remorse for what they did. And he knew that obviously they had told their father something. The father had no idea that he was still alive. Now all of a sudden the father is going to get a message or maybe a visit from Yosef. The brothers will be so embarrassed. It will be a death, it will be a death sentence to the brothers. They'll, be so, they'll never get over the embarrassment. In front of their father, in front of their grandfather, Yitzhak Gavino. Wow, you did what for 22 years? You fooled me? You didn't tell me what you did to Yosef? That would be a terrible injustice. And Yosef was not willing to put his brothers through the shame. And he was willing to sit in, 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 silent, in silent suffering in Mitzrayim, hide his identity and not let Yaakov know that he's still alive in order, says, says Archaim HaKadosh, wouldn't be the Archaim, would be difficult for us to say such a thing, in, in, in the words of the Archaim, better to throw yourself in a kibshnev, better to sit silently in silent suffering for nine years and not until the brothers came themselves and they came to this conclusion themselves of what a terrible mistake they did. Then he said, okay, now... Go tell my father, now go tell my father that I'm still alive. Now you can go tell your father. Now they themselves came to the realization, it's not him embarrassing or insulting them, it's they themselves coming to the realization and repenting and telling their father Yaakov what they did. Then he was willing to let Yaakov know that he's still alive. But until that moment, not, I should not be the one to embarrass my brothers. I should not be the ones to cause such a terrible shame and embarrassment to my brothers. The well-known, the famous Machlegas between the Chavetz Chaim and Yisrael Salanter. When the Chavetz Chaim wrote his Sefer Chavetz Chaim, he went to Yisrael Salanter for Hagdama. It's well documented the story. Yisrael Salanter refused to give the Chavetz Chaim a Haskama to Sefer, although he did give Haskama to others form of the Chavetz Chaim, but not to the Sefer Chavetz Chaim. Why? Because he disagreed with one of the halachas in the Sefer. Which halacha they disagree with? There was a follow up discussion. The Chavetz Chaim said, just write that you agree except for that thing. And Rabbi Shalom said, no, maybe people won't read it and they'll just see my scum they'll think I agree with that halacha also. And I don't agree with that categorically opposed, I, I disagree with that halacha. What was the halacha they disagreed with? Chavetz Chaim says, if you say Lashon Har about a certain person, that person doesn't know that you said Lashon Har, and you want Mechila, you want him to forgive you. You have to go to him and you have to say, I spoke Lashon Har about you and asked you forgiveness. Rosh Hashanah said, who gave you a right to embarrass that person? Who gave you a right to go to him and tell him that you spoke badly about him? He'll get insulted. He'll get upset. He'll get embarrassed. Say, so, what? what did you say about me? Who did you tell? Wow, I can't believe it. Now you'll calm him down and say, please forgive me. Okay, but at that moment you insulted him. You have no right to do that. I, you have to get forgiveness. That's your problem. You will not get forgiveness for that. And you cannot get forgiveness. You are not allowed to go. That was the position that Rabbi Shlomo Salanter took. It's not our place over here to decide. Halacha between the great Rabbi Shlomo Salanter and the Chavetz Chaim. They're both great, such, such great, such great tzaddikim. And tell me that we, we have no place over here to decide. But we see from the point of Rabbi Shlomo Salanter how careful we have to be. What do you mean? I'm going to ask him forgiveness. He'll forgive me. I'll, I'll explain it to him. Forgive me. Yeah, but at that moment, you're causing him shame. You're causing him embarrassment. 
embarrassment, you're causing your hurt. Who gave you a right? How careful we have to be, says the Rachaim HaKadosh, Yitzvah was willing to sit nine years in silent suffering, just not to insult and not to put his brothers through that shame. Good Shabbos.